My first guest tonight is the new ranking Democrat on the Senate Finance Committee, thanks to the legal trouble of a colleague who has a very similar name. Senator Liz Krueger joins me in the studio tonight to discuss the progress that is being made towards reaching a budget deal, possibly even ahead of schedule. Thank you very much for coming in, Senator. I appreciate it. So we hear today, this morning actually, from the Senate's uh, Majority Leader, Dean Skelos, the Speaker, and not the Governor, but the two legislative leaders, that they are hoping to have a handshake, conceptual framework, if you will, by tomorrow. Is that doable? It is if they have made enough progress on the differences between the two houses and the governor. Now, of course, we had a conference, a general conference committee last night. We pretty much understand the differences between the Democrats and the Republicans in the legislature, but we haven't heard from the governor where he is on the issue. So when Dean Skelos and Shelley Silver say they have a conceptual framework, they will need, of course, a third man in the room to see whether that's going forward. Well, the governor has been talking very tough as of late. He you know, went to Syracuse and did his final budget tour, and then after that he puts out this web video and he, and he talks about if there's a shutdown, it will be the legislature's fault. What do you make of that? Is it, is it helpful and conducive towards getting a deal? Well, clearly it's a stylistic um, approach by the governor to reinforce his message that either we're going to get a budget done on time or he's going to do something about it. I guess I would suggest at this moment in time, the best thing for all of us to do is to sit down and hammer things out with each other. So it requires people, all people, um, not to have rhetorical debates, but to be in a room together going item by item by item. But that's not happening. Well, I hope that is going to happen because, again, I will use the governor's argument. The clock is ticking. We are getting very close to April 1st. And unless people sit in a room and go through the details together and work them out, we're not going to have a budget. I want an on-time budget. I want a good budget. I fear I won't like this budget, but I recognize that delaying tactics won't, have, won't accomplish anything. Well, the governor, as far as I can tell, actually, what he really wants is an early budget. And of course, that would give him some serious bragging rights. He's setting up an argument that you can see. I mean, once it, the pieces started to fall into place, he starts to talk about extenders, then, and you know, how he's going to have no qualms about putting his entire budget into extenders, the way David Patterson did with great success from his point of view, not the legislature's point of view. And then he puts out this video that says, and if there's a shutdown, it won't be my fault. And then you could see that he might argue, well, if it's early, it's because I scared you into it. You know, 19 million New Yorkers, each of them affected in some way by the budget that gets done in Albany. I don't think the issue is 25 or 24 hours early, 24 hours late. The issue is what is in the budget and can we make the best package possible for all of New York State. Okay, so let's talk about what may or may not be in there then. Rent control is a huge issue for people like yourself. That would be Democrats who represent the boroughs of New York City. Big Westchester, Nassau, True. Um, Good point. And Rockland County. Rent regulation is probably the largest economic issue facing these counties. We have lost 300,000 affordable units in the last decade as we watched our rent laws be weakened. We know we cannot build ourselves out of this mm -hmm. crisis because nobody has the money to build affordable housing and we've got a federal government who's proposing cutting even more out of the programs. So we have to, again, emphasize, for two and a half million New Yorkers, we have to do something to strengthen the law to protect their ability to stay in their homes because the impact on the state budget, if these people were to be pushed out of their homes in the next couple of years, would be more than we could possibly comprehend. So the Assembly Democrats, there's a lot of grumbling because it looks at this point like as much as the Speaker would like rent regulation to be in the budget, it's not going to happen. The governor himself has said, uh, yes, uh, let's see, no it won't, yes it will, no it won't. I think that's where we're at. We're at the no it won't point. If it is not in the budget, will you have difficulty voting yes? That may be one of the key issues for me as a legislator. Um, if there is not rent regulation in the budget or an ability to believe that we are ending up with much stronger laws, 
long before June 15th, the deadline. Mm. Um, that may be a basis for me and many of my Senate Democratic colleagues not to be able to vote for this budget. Okay, so but you could see a scenario where if you have a conceptual deal that does not include the millionaire's tax, which increases revenue, that does not store a great, uh, restore a great deal of education aid, that maybe there might be a few Senate Republicans who would have some problems as well voting yes. Even those ren with the renegade IDC members, those independent Democrats who bolted from your conference and have been voting with the Republicans, will it be problematic for the Senate majority to pass a budget without assistance from the Democrats? Conceivably, the Senate Republicans need some of us to come with them. Again, remember two years ago, remember a year ago, we were in a 32-30 yes, formula. I try to forget, Senator, well, but yes. But as you saw, it was extraordinarily difficult to get things accomplished and to close deals with such a small difference between the majority and the minority. The, it's flipped today, so they're 30 to we're 30, but it's equally difficult to deal with a closely divided house. And let's be honest, there are big contentious issues in this budget because we're talking about having to cut $10 billion out of the budget. We've lost billions of dollars of federal money that we were using to help fill the gaps in the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see anything that anybody's going to be very happy about with the outcome. I think we all recognize we are responsible legislators. We have to come up with a balanced budget by April 1st, but it doesn't mean it's easy. So I don't I don't um, believe that Dean Skelos or Sheldon Silver has an easy job here. Do you believe that there could be a problem with a quorum? I mean, what we saw in the Wisconsin was the Democrats saying, we feel so strongly about this collective bargaining push that they actually ended up losing, although then the courts weighed in, that they split for some other state. Would you go to, I don't know, Massachusetts? It's not that far away, actually. It's a lovely state, but I haven't actually planned any <laughs> trips to Massachusetts in the near future. Um, of course, that kind of decision would have to be made by a conference working together. You are right, though. People need to understand a quorum of 38 senators must be in attendance to vote on budget bills. Mm. And so technically, there are 32 Republicans. There are the four break-off independent Democrats. And then there are the 26 remaining. So the math is interesting. And let's be honest, we wake up every day thinking Albany's not a slow, boring town anymore. Yes, that's true. We are not getting a lot of sleep. But I, you mentioned something earlier about the impact of a budget. It's going to impact people all over the state. But there's a really interesting study that just came out that has to do with the disproportionately negative impact on women and children in the budget as the governor presented it. Yes. And it's uh, it's really actually pretty fascinating. And I know you've taken a look at it. So what what's highlighted for me is that 77% of New York City's poor are, are children or adult women, which means, and of course since you're a Manhattan representative, which is why I'm citing this number, which means education aid that gets cut hurts kids, Medicaid aid that gets cut hurts kids, and then human services Human programs. services cuts disproportionately impact women and children, and seniors cuts, which of course are overlap Medicaid and seniors and human services, um, all disproportionately hit women because women tend to live longer and they are the elderly poor. So I am particularly concerned and have been talking about the fact that both the federal government proposals and the state government proposals, whether by intent or not, disproportionately will harm poor women and their children and our elderly mothers. And and it's important to talk about this. So I'm very glad that the New York Women's Foundation had the time and the resources to do an actual report highlighting this. Yes, and we should just say in closing that it's not that we have anything in particular against men. It's just that the budget, and even though women tend to vote in greater numbers, we should probably point out, but it's just that the budget happens to have such a large impact on the lives of people who rely on government, and a, a fair portion of those people happen to be female. And I have always taken the position that across the board budget cuts um, show a lack of understanding of the policy role of government in people's lives. I believe that government is there to help meet the needs of those least able to help themselves. And that is the poor, that is the elderly, that is disabled. And as we have seen, they are, those people are disproportionately women and children. So I think that a better approach than what we will end up with this year in a budget for cutting money out is to take a serious look at how we're prioritizing 
our policy goals as mm -hmm. a government. Well, perhaps next year when the economy hopefully will improve. In the, me in the meantime, Senator Liz Krieger, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thank you.